So why does this exist? Hey everyone, welcome to Prince of the Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and we are here today with The Fly 2, a movie that I'm kind of surprised at. Sorry about that. I felt like I was going to sneeze, but then it never came. It's like it was like right there tickling my tickling my nose, and it's like just didn't come. But yeah, I question why this movie exists, because the first movie kind of didn't leave it off with a need for a sequel. Also, I may be wrong, I may be misremembering, but didn't Jeff Goldblum's character die in the end? Like, after everything, after everything that went down, after his transformation and all, didn't he die? Like, that that would have to mean that this movie is probably not a proper sequel, but just a sequel of concept. There are movies like that, mind you where the the sequel isn't actually following the same storyline but has i guess you could say the same vibe where it's like oh it covers the same topic it covers the same kind of uh story just with different characters different things sometimes it even gets very meta um this is gonna be a weird ass comparison but the first thing that came to my mind because i heard uh, someone talking about it lately is the human centipede because the second human centipede movie is a completely different story that takes place in a world where the first movie is an actual movie and then there's this guy in the second movie who kind of tries to repeat the process of the movie he watched and make a a real life human centipede it's it's wild and metal like that also it definitely ramps things up i think i've i think the first two human centipede movies are the only ones i've actually seen i think i just kind of gave up after that <laughs> the, the i think there's like four of them i want to say the fact that there's that many is ridiculous but the point is this is a movie that like the human centipede did not call for a sequel it doesn't need a sequel, it doesn't need any follow-up, but I I have to assume it's like The Human Centipede in the idea that it's not going to be like the same story. I We're probably not going to get any of the same characters, um, especially, obviously, the main character, because he can't return. <laughs> but we're probably not going to get any of the same ones. It's probably not going to be a follow-up to the original in much of any way. Unless maybe the events of the original are just briefly mentioned that's the only thing i could see happening but i don't know i i, I don't know I, I don't really know what to expect from this but if they've decided to do this i wonder if it's going to be one of those times where they ramp up the the weirdness or if they kind of dial it back a little bit because that just depends on the movie as to which one of the those routes it goes down but i guess it's just a case of let's watch and find out i actually don't know much of anything about this one comparatively the first one it's like i i had heard about i've heard people talk about i knew like certain things about but this one i'm going in like almost completely blind so i guess we'll see how this stacks up and what kind of comparisons we can draw to the original um let's let's see where it goes cutting in here real quick to remind you of all the awesome content we have on the channel between monday and friday we have a plethora of awesome series reactions with two on wednesday we also have movie reactions every saturday and sunday as well as let's plays we currently alternate between horizon forbidden west and baldur's gate 3 every day as well as have near automata on saturdays and don't forget to follow the link in the description below to today's reaction I do redirect all reactions just due to copyright. And on top of that, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content like this. Thank you so much for tuning in, and let's get to today's reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So the first 
fly well technically not the first because it was a remake uh the first of this duology <laughs> um with jeff goldblum and gina davis the first movie there was you know awkward and weird and and not always in the best way it receives all this praise but the early portions of that film had some issues with pacing, with dialogue, with the acting. And these are some good actors that were in it. Gina Davis, Jeff Goldblum, great actors. But the first portion of that film, basically until the Brundlefly stuff started happening, was not good. And the fly once the, the fly stuff really like, you know, got to that point of where it's like super like creepy and entertaining and the aggression comes in and everything that's when it started to improve that's when the movie started to become better and i kind of have this unpopular opinion that the the first movie is overrated it's not bad but it's just it's not anywhere near as good as a lot of people say it's not like this master piece of horror it's not even close. Of course, if we're being completely honest, most of these classic horror movies aren't actually that good. Most of people's praise for them is built on uh, the rose-colored glasses they have on from the nostalgia and everything. They, they look back at these movies with such nostalgia that they can't admit, it's like, oh, this is just not good writing anymore. Maybe back in the day it could be seen as such because there wasn't anything better to compare it to. But now nowadays there just is. <laughs> um, and that's not to say every older horror movie is bad. But a lot of them really don't like live up to the hype that they have. Um, the Fly is definitely one of them. Maybe it worked back in the day, but nowadays in the 2020s it absolutely does not the fly 2 on the other hand extremely unpopular opinion is vastly better than the first i'm not even kidding you here like i looked up reviews for this movie they are almost entirely negative even the positive reviews aren't that positive this movie got like completely panned and, and is like called like nowhere near the level of the first and everything which is wild to me this was so drastically better on every level the acting is better the effects the 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 story it's like it's just so much better and and it actually has a happy ending. Maybe that maybe people don't like that, but I did. I mean, after the first one was so tragic and there was nothing that could be done about it, the fact that this one does have a happy ending, the fact that it is able to turn that around, especially with the advancements that were made on the, the teleportation uh, pods and everything, it makes sense. It makes sense to take the tragedy of the first film and build on that to have tragic moments but have it turned around in the end to where everything works out it's like just repeating the tragedy again would be a waste of time and mind you some people would say doing a sequel to the fly in the first place is a waste of time and i i kind of agree because like i said in the pre-thoughts it's like why did this need why did the first movie need a sequel in the first place it didn't feel like it 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 required or asked for one. I honestly I don't think that it needed to happen, but I'm glad it did. The acting was so much better. The acting in the first movie is mixed. Um the first ha the first half or so, I I don't know the exact timeline, but the first portion of the film prior to when like the aggression and the brundlefly stuff gets into play is so awkward and bad and and it's it's like it's not even like you know jeff goldblum and gina davis who can play awkward well it's not them doing it well it's just awkwardly bad and the pacing is not great 
the writing is not great. It, it the movie only gets good once you get to the Brundlefly stuff. And even then, it's like it's just like it's okay. It's good. Nothing amazing. The effects are good, but this movie is good from the start. I mean, it does kind of throw you into it right at the beginning. You're not given like a lot of time to prepare. But you if you're watching this, you will have more than likely watched the first, and so I guess you kind of don't need it. You know the backstory, you know what happened, and you get you you get what's going on pretty quickly. Uh, even though that's clearly not Gina Davis at the beginning and all, um, it, it's the same character. We see her giving birth and dying in, in 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 childbirth. We see everything we need to setting up for that, and um, uh, I don't know if he was shown in the first movie, but Bartok was, I guess, the guy funding uh, Seth in, in in the first movie. Um, I did see that when looking the movie up. He, he was apparently the funder of Seth Brundle's uh, research and all. So so that also adds up to uh, how, how it makes sense that now everything's kind of in his hands and all. If, if it hadn't been so long for me, I probably would have remembered that too. But I, I reacted to the first movie like a, over a year and a half ago. It was in January of 2023. It's like, that's insane to think about. But yeah, it's been that long. Um, but yeah, go, going into this, it's like, again, I didn't think it was necessary, but it just, it goes right off the bat and just instantly makes us more invested. Like, I am vastly more invested in this story than I was in the first. Because I have something to work off of already here. And this, this kid, Martin, his life is just born into tragedy he was literally born um as this hybrid creature who was going to uh all too quickly but also slowly enough turn into another brundlefly and he's being used by bartok industries this entire time his entire life he grows matures at a, an insane rate to the point where he realizes he's being used and he sees some crazy shit but he's being manipulated and gaslit into thinking like he's doing good work he's even lied to about getting a private um uh home apartment whatever you want to call it and he's lied to about their goals and everything about the job he's getting when he's literally just doing their dirty work for them because he's smarter than them and he's constantly abused by uh, Dr. Janeway and the other doctor as well, by the, the one security guy. The only one who's not abusing him most of the time is uh, Bartok himself, who acts as a father figure to him. Like he even mentions in the movie, it's like he loved him. Because Bartok treated him nicely, but it was, it was gaslighting. It was manipulation. It was lies to make him subservient. Unfortunately, or well, actually fortunately, it didn't work, and he was able to break out of that, and, you know, everything that happened, happened. Luckily, I think uh, Beth also helped with that. Him having, like, an actual relationship with someone helped. So that was, you know, positive influence on him. And, and by the end, when you're getting into, like, him as the second Brundlefly like rampaging through the facility it's like not only are the gore effects fantastic but you're cheering for him because unlike with the first film where uh seth brundle was like going crazy and getting aggressive and violent and he needed to be taken out this one you feel bad for martin and the idea of the possibility of him getting like you know fixed if someone is used as a uh as a um how do i put it as as a donor that's the word <laughs> sorry if someone is used as a donor he can be actually repaired he didn't want to do that though because it was unethical 
um, or unethical, whatever. <laughs> and he couldn't think of anyone he would want to do that with. And I thought that Beth was going to volunteer to do it herself, which he would never accept, but she might have forced him into it, uh, forced it to happen. I'm really glad that didn't happen because my second choice was obviously a Bartok. Like, it was either going to be she would have to sacrifice herself and force him to do it to save him, or he would take Bartok as a victim uh, donor to do it. And I'm so glad it was the latter, because it, it allows him to get his revenge on Bartok for everything he's been put through. He gets his revenge on everyone else who has victimized him, and he survives. He survives in the end. He, he, he survives with Beth. They get to survive together. The bad guys are all taken out. And Bartok is left in this horrific state and treated like that dog earlier in the film that was, you know, turned into that monstrous form as well. That uh, Martin put out of its misery with the, with the chloroform and everything. It, it, he was put into that same position and it's it's so fucking satisfying it is so goddamn satisfying it is such a great moment the writing is honestly fantastic in this like I, I a lot of those negative reviews I was looking at were saying the writing was bad I'm like what are you high the writing in this is great. It's so solid. Again, it hooks you into the story. It invests you in the characters and what's going on. It makes you care about the events. The pacing is good. Nothing feels like off in, in terms of feeling too fast. It doesn't feel too slow. It, it, it's just, it's good. It's well written. The, sh the scenes are well directed. The actors are doing a great job the entire film. It's not the best acting I've seen by any means, but they're doing a genuinely good job the entire time. It's consistent in that regard. Unlike the first movie, where again, like the first portion of it, the first half or so, was really awkwardly bad, and it got better in the second half once the Brundlefly stuff came in. I don't know why that was the case. It's like, oh, Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum just decided to start actually trying once that stuff came in? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, it's like, this was so much better. Like, this wasn't just even, like, better just technically speaking or just from a general standpoint. It's not, it's not even just that it was better. It was good. Like, this was a good movie. Like, I, I might even go as far as to say, like, great. I actively enjoyed it. There, there wasn't really a point of it where I was, like, like, really, like, disliking it. The closest thing was when I had a breakdown because of the dog. Like, that fucked me up. But in the best way, because it's, it's meant to fuck you up. It's meant to bother the shit out of you, because it's, it's fucked up. It's insanely fucked up. Honestly, anyone who wasn't messed up by that scene, it's like, I almost don't trust you. It's like, how can you not be fucked up at that scene? It's like, that upset me on, like, such a visceral level. <laughs> like, my God. But yeah, it was it was so good. And again, like, another thing that I, I saw complaints about, people were saying the effects, like, were bad compared to the first. It's like, no... What? <laughs> Again, are you high? Those effects were fantastic. The guy's face melt, that was such a good effect. The guy getting, like, his head getting big squished under the elevator. Oh my god, that was great. Those practical effects were fantastic. I mean, I'm not going to say it was like the level of the thing, because practically nothing in terms of practical effects is on that level. <laughs> because it's like, how, how would you even pretend to get to that level? The thing is like the god of practical effects. 
So no, it's not like on that scale, but I'm not pretending it ever could be. The effects, just from a general sense, were fantastic. I, I, I don't understand the hate this film apparently gets. It makes no sense to me. Mind you, it's not been the first time this has happened. There's a lot of movies that I, I love that a lot of people don't. And to be fair, there's also movies that are extremely well received that I can't stand. <laughs> it just happens. Or or in some cases, movies that are extremely well received that I just think are super overrated. Like The First Fly or The Godfather or stuff like that. Not necessarily bad movies, just extremely overrated. <laughs> but yeah, it's like that's that's why media is subjective. If different people can have different opinions, to especially to this degree, but to any degree, then the media, by its nature, has to be subjective. It has to be, um, um, mind is blanking, hate when that happens. It has to be, uh, just a matter of opinion, basically. Um, the quality of any piece of media, though, is... Whether it's music, movies, video games, comic books, anything. If it's a piece of media, it's inherently subjective. It's inherently opinion as to the quality of it. Even if that opinion is universally shared by most people, the fact is, if even one person can disagree with it, then it's not fact, it's opinion. It's subjective opinion. And so that kind of, it, it kind of irritates me when people try to say like, oh, this movie is objectively good. It's like, nope, that's not possible. That, that, that cannot happen. Uh, again, a movie, a game, etc. cannot be objectively good. Like the best you can hope for is that it's well made on the most technical standpoint. But that does not make it objectively good. That just means it's technically well made. There is a difference. So, I very clearly, like, really love this movie. <laughs> but I want to hear your thoughts. Um, I, I want to know what you guys think of it. Do you like it at all do you love it as much as me i probably not but feel free to say if you do um and if you do dislike it for any reason please let me know why i i i really want to know your reasonings and everything and because i don't understand i i don't understand the hate this movie gets and again it's all subjective if you genuinely don't like this movie that's perfectly fine you're entitled to that I'm never going to tell you otherwise. I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise. I am just sharing my opinion from my viewing experience. It's all subjective, and I'm not going to try to tell you what to feel. And, and that goes for any movie, any series, anything we react to, anything we play on this channel or the new um, uh, gaming channel. I I'm not going to try to change your mind. I'm just going to share my own thoughts. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you thought of this film down in the comments below. And tell me what you thought of it compared to the first as well. Um, just how you think the first compares in terms of, again, directing, writing, acting, all of that. Uh, but thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to Venom for requesting this. And yeah, that ends our duology of the Fly movies. So for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. Yeah, see y'all next time.